Hey everybody, I want to make this quick video, try to make it five minutes or less. Um, as we finish up the race season, you know, a lot of people are going to get into the gym and you hear the term base and a lot of people are going to get into their base routines. And I just finished my third uh, ride. I'm doing three day blocks of 15 hours to prepare for tour of the Southland and uh, in New Zealand. And the ride yesterday was five hours endurance try and hold it the whole time. It's a really hard workout. Um, it doesn't sound hard, it's not sexy. Um, you feel shattered in a different way. So if you go out and do a group ride, you do a road race or a crit, you know, you're just torn apart and there's times where you can barely pedal, right? This is a different type of tired that you get from long, slow duration rides where at like hour two and a half or three, if you've been consistently pedaling, and I'm talking no zone one, I, uh, you know, you get tired. It's a fatigued feeling and you got to mentally block it out and soldier on and the gains are massive from this. And a lot of people just don't do them. Um, I had an athlete that was the collegiate national champion and he, and he said that he couldn't, he was so amazed at what those rides did for him when he was racing and training. And he's like, it's such a stupid workout. Like don't, don't ride in zone one. It sounds so easy on paper. But as we move into these winter months and you start base riding, I kind of wanted to highlight a couple things that can help you out um, and just point out how, how to you know envision this because it is tempting to go do other rides, but if you really want to play this long game and build a foundation, you know, if you're, the best way a guy told me was if you're building a, a building, um, it can only go so high depending on how big of a foundation you build, right? So if you have just a few base rides and you start doing sweet spot and uh, then get into VO2 max and you're sprinting, you can only go up so high. But if you build this bigger base, the wider the base, the higher the building can go up. And really what we're doing as you go through base and then you go through the typical build phase where you're getting higher intensity, the more bricks you lay on the bottom, the more you can stack on top. And you need to remember that because it's not just how many you can stack on top. Like if you only did a couple base rides, you really only have the ability to go after you know, a few high intensity rides before they just make you really tired. That's not really training. That's just getting exhausted. <laughs> and another way to think of it, you got to remember, you know, we talk about repeatability. Um, the term biologic durability came up in a lot of podcasts that we did some write-ups about maybe half a year ago. Um, sorry if you can hear that person working in their yard. Um, imagine a new cyclist, your friend that doesn't ride if they wouldn't be able to ride a bike as hard as you for one minute, right? Like a really intense short duration. But let's say, imagine that they could. Imagine somehow they get on a bike and they can ride that one minute as hard as you can ride it. They would be crushed after that, right? That's the extreme though. Like the total newbie cyclist going as hard as you can go. Now picture yourself. What if you had a bigger base of just being able to ride endurance rides that make you more durable as a cyclist. It's a hard thing to quantify, right? Like the, the five hour ride I did, there's TSS and you know, there's all the metrics that we look at, but it's not looking at a cellular level of you listen to podcasts and there's articles on how it's actually, at that point of the ride, I'm recruiting fast twitch muscles to ride at endurance. I'm recruiting everything possible to pedal this damn bike. I mean, 200 and I was aiming for 280 watts. Um, I think I ended up at 275 for five hours. Um, and I laugh because people hate when they have to come in and out of a city. I definitely yesterday was like hating all the stoplights and you lose some watts here and there. Um, I give my athletes a hard time. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's just a stoplight. But it, you're when you're in it, you're like, damn, these lights. Um, but it was, I was giving everything possible. I mean, the last half an hour, I'm sitting, I'm standing, I'm spinning faster, I'm spinning slower, I'm, you know, doing whatever I can do to change up the muscle groups. And it's just like, dude, this is hard. If you had that type of base, imagine how many more of those one minute efforts you could do. So building repeatability, it's not just like a three month thing. Um, endurance sports aren't a three month thing. I mean, everyone that's that's really good at this sport puts the time in. There's no way to hide around the work. Um, last couple things, you know, I had an athlete that is a newer, He, if you saw him riding, you'd be like, that dude's a cyclist, he rides. 
He never, though, had ridden consistently. And so literally by doing a two-hour endurance ride, and it took us probably about a month to get him to actually do a, a, an endurance ride properly. This goes back to like the intervals don't have to be really crazy complicated, but you need to execute them properly. He did a two-hour endurance ride and set an hour and 30-minute lifetime PR. That's mind-blowing. But you'd be amazed how many people, the number of people that I can get to set the lifetime power PRs that they want to do well in road races, but they, they just never have actually worked anything remotely close to two hours. Give them a few long intervals back to back to back, and they're setting PRs like crazy. Like, you just got to do it. And then once you realize, like, what the puzzle pieces are to put together to get to that PR, okay, how do we do this over and over again in different ways and at different durations to make you faster? Um, so I guess the, th the things here, the building blocks, remember this is you're building a pyramid and you only need to sprinkle on top the high intensity a little bit. You need a big base. Repeatability, that's only gonna happen with a big base. There should be a feeling of difference between rides that are really high intensity, go on you know, the GSD ride in Nashville, go on the Latte ride in Rochester, go on the Peddler ride in Memphis, go on, uh, the corner stop ride in Boulder. Go on, I'm trying to think of like hard group rides I've been on in my life. Versus you going out and riding, consistently building that base, building the ability to have repeatability. Um, I think that's it. Base season, when you hear people talking about base and you want to know what you need to do base, ride some endurance miles over and over again. And you don't have to do five hours. Trust me, go do two hours. And I'll, I'm going to update the blog on don't ride in zone one. Don't ride in zone one if you're going out for an endurance ride. Only ride in zone one if you're doing a recovery ride or if you're working on those sprinkles on top, that high intensity, and you're working on your max wattages for those, ride zone one in between those periods. So if you're doing like 30 second all out efforts to try and get a PR, because that's like a weak spot in your power duration curve, rest 10 minutes between those efforts. Full, full, full rest. Now, Tabata intervals are totally different. That's when you're working on repeatability of these hard efforts. Different thing, but we won't get into that now. So, everybody, let's get some big miles and uh, Tour of Southland. We'll be chronicling that as we go along. Uh, it's going to be hard. See ya.